morning. I'm Chad Stebbins from the Institute of International Studies, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to our second Spain semester presentation this morning. We have Dr. Ruben Galve Rivera with us, who is one of our Spanish professors here in his second year. He comes to us from Sevilla, Spain, which is in this extreme southern portion of Spain. Uh, you might notice some of the stage decor. Over here, the, the pink item is an actual bullfighter's cape uh, used in Madrid, I believe in 2012. And this was a wedding present to Dr. Galve and, and his wife. Can you imagine that, getting uh, a matador's blood-stained cape as a wedding present? And if you want to come up afterwards, uh, you can notice quite a bit of blood on the bottom of that cape. The other side is yellow, and it's autographed by the matador, so kind of a, a unique item. One thing I wanted to uh, bring to your attention, outside on the table we have these little film festival passports, and this year we are emphasizing our 10 Spanish films that are part of the Spain semester. And if you want to pick up one of these passports on the way out, and then every time you come to a film, you can get your passport stamped. And the 15 students who attend the most films this semester will receive a nice prize. And don't think you have to attend all 10 to win something. I'm expecting that maybe the top people will have attended five or six films. So again, pick one of these up on, on your way out on the table. Bring it with you to the films. The first film is this Tuesday evening at 7 o'clock over in Cornell Auditorium in Plaster Hall, which is the School of Business Building. And the films are, are every Tuesday night at 7, uh, except during fall break, the film is on Thursday night that week. So again, Dr. Galve, Dr. Galve Rivera is with us. He's from Seville. If you've ever been to Kansas City, to the plaza, uh, you might notice all the beautiful fountains. Well, our Country Club Plaza in Kansas City was inspired by Seville. And in fact, Kansas City and Seville have had a sister city relationship for quite a few years. So it's great to see that Spanish influence in Kansas City. So please join me in welcoming Dr. Ruben Galve Rivera. Good morning, everyone, and uh, thanks for attending. Um, one quick thing I want to say about my presentation, it's, uh, it's going to be a very subjective presentation, meaning it's based on my own personal experience as a Spaniard living there. <clears throat> this means some of the comments that I make are not research-based, just opinion. Okay. <clears throat> so um, let's start with the stereotypes. So every culture has its stereotypes, right? We have the French, no? And they drink wine and eat cheese all day long. <laughs> we have the Germans, right? Who are drinking beer all day while they're working at factories, making cars. Then we have the US. <clears throat> <laughs> so eating burgers and hot dogs, right? That's all they eat. Um, and then you have the idea of America, right? Which is very different from Spain, by the way. In Spain, the, 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 pr the, the pride of being a Spaniard is not very high these days, but I'm not, I'm not gonna get into that. Um, Spain, of course, has its own stereotypes. Um, I had a, a research paper from a student once that <clears throat> she was saying that one of the, acti or some of the activities that Spanish college and high school kids do is uh, drive Formula One and uh, bullfight. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, so usually we just have bulls running around and then we go with our friends, right? Just go hang out with a bull. That's just bullfight, right? That's a picture of me um, when I was, just, just a random day, I don't remember the date. But, um, so, the reality is that about 
three quarters of Spaniards aren't really interested on bullfighting. Um, bullfighting has seen a decline over the years. Um, and again, well, let me reassure you that this, uh, all the comments that I'm going to be making, it really depends where in Spain. Spain is a big land, a lot of cultures within Spain. Uh, my experience is more the southern Spain, okay? But uh, going back to the bullfighting, uh, so the interest is just not there as it used to be. Uh, not to bullfight, but to actually watch bullfights, right? Um, only a fractional number of people get to bullfight, very, very, very minimal. Um, and they usually come from the rural areas for obvious reasons. Um, yeah, still not too long ago, uh, bullfighters were considered some type of a myth. So you're a bullfighter, wow. Um, and then bullfights were televised on a very regular basis. That's all changed. Uh, it's not like that anymore. Um, and so Spaniards don't really bullfight, <laughs> okay? And they don't have much interest for bullfights. And again, this is a very general statement, okay? Um, on the arena <laughs> or on TV either, right? Um, so outside a specific uh, niche. Uh, Catalonia, for example, and I don't know if uh, you're familiar with the geography of Spain, Catalonia is in the north, uh, northeast of Spain, it's a region. Um, they recently banned uh, bullfighting. So you can see how things are changing now. So what did I and my friends do on our spare time, okay, when we were in high school and college. Well, the things we did were we hang out, either at the street, you just go to the street, sit down somewhere, maybe a park, or just down the house, um, and then just hang out, okay? Maybe at a coffee place, right? Maybe go to a bar, have a beer maybe, have some tapas. We go kick the ball, right? Uh, football, no? Soccer. Uh, some of us maybe join a team, okay? Uh, play video games. That's very common everywhere, right? Um, so some of the biggest differences between going to school here and going to school in Spain are, and I'm going to start with high school. For example, there's a minimum or not existent uh, number of extracurricular activities. You guys have a lot of stuff going on outside classes, right? Uh, many clubs that you can join, you know, or you can be part of the band, you can play a sport, right? So in Spain, there's a lack of competition. There's really no competition yeah, uh, when it comes to sports. So we don't have high schools competing against, against each other in any sport. It doesn't exist. Um, and then there's much lower graduation rates, okay? Um, in my high school, it was really, really low. Not many people graduated. Um, I don't know the specific number, but uh, yeah, not very many. Um, and then what about college, the differences? Um, one of the things that uh, Spain does is if you want to go to, uh, if you want to get degrees like law, you, know, you want to go to law school, you want to do med school, you don't have to get a, a degree first. You go straight from high school to college, and your first year of college is just med school, med school, med school, or law school. Um, but in college in Spain, uh, for the most part, there's not one campus like here. There are multiple campuses or buildings around the city. Yeah. Uh, and so buildings are sp very spread out. And one reason is because, let's say I want to get a business degree. So you go to the business building, and you're going to be taking classes from your very first year just on business. OK, you don't have to take the other courses, like the, the general ones, right, general requirements. So really, your four years of college or more uh, are going to be spent in that specific building. That's it, OK? Uh, tuition is uh, very affordable. Uh, but with that comes 
a lack of students' resources. For example, we don't have advising and so many other resources that you guys have here. Um, and events, very little, very few events. Um, and there's a minimum and almost no importance of college sports. So competition between universities is mostly at a regional level, okay, with a very, very, very low attendance. What's the main sport in Spain? Soccer, not football. Okay, this is a game from 2011 between University of Sevilla and University of Córdoba, okay, to the main universities in the southern of Spain. Look, does it look like your typical football stadium with a bunch of people? I mean, I see three people standing there just watching the game. So you see the difference, right? There's just that, there's not that competition um, when it comes to sports. So where and how is it possible to compete if you like sports? Well, you can join on your own uh, an established club, club team. You can just join uh, the city league which uh, usually is friends, they get together, they make a team, and they just compete against other teams made out of friends, okay? And then you have different levels, okay? So each, each level is based on how good your team is. If your team is good, it's the best in your league that year, you'll go to the upper division, and so that's how it goes. Okay? Um, and then you have the, your typical <laughs> informal and friendly games. Hey, I, I know eight people, that I want to play tomorrow. Okay, well, I'll bring a few others and we'll just meet at the fields and we'll play for an hour and a half or whatever. So, the most popular, though, is not football. It's not soccer, actually. People think that's what Spanish play. What Spanish play is futsal. Um, it's, it's a little different. Uh, it's not like indoor soccer, okay, uh, that you guys have here. Uh, with walls and, uh, and a bigger ball and everything. Futsal is actually a very small field with no walls and a very uh, much smaller ball that is really hard. That one actually hurts if you, if you have to hit it with your head. Um, but this is what Spaniards play for the most part. Okay. Okay, so this idea of, let me go back, this idea of competition is very different than in the US. Sports-wise, like I've already mentioned, and in academics, um, for example, in high school, we don't have valedictorians. We don't have the top of the class, okay? There's no difference between one student and another other than whatever grade that student makes by helping to get into a specific degree in college, okay? Um, not a specific school. It's very different, okay? Um, and then in college, I believe it's the same. That I'm not certain. Um, I do re remember when I was in college, getting my undergrad in Spain, uh, I never remember seeing or hearing anything about top of the class or, you know, I graduated with honors or anything like that. It might be, I, that I don't know, honestly. Um, but there's just people, there's no sense of competition among students either. For example, um, I remember having friends, or me doing it for other friends, looking up each other's grades. So you would go, hey, can you check out, if you're going to class tomorrow, can you check my grade on this course? Usually they'll post it, professors will post grades on their doors, and there's no student ID or anything, it's just your, your name, your grade, right? So no one cares, it, whatever grade you get, you get. Um, <clears throat> so the result, is a college, okay, university, you go to college, without interest in sports, okay, in, co in college sports. Uh, there's a non-existence of fraternities and or sororities. Uh, there's a very low number of organized events, um, and there's no, well, there's very little extra resources, like I mentioned earlier, not like advising or uh, so many of the others that you guys have here. Um, so, what do you do? Well, you focus on your courses, going to class and studying, pretty much, okay? 
um, at a university level um, and high school too. Uh, but at a university level, passing isn't really granted. Uh, it's pretty common to fail some classes, okay? And so maybe a degree of, uh, the, the one I can think of right now would be uh, industrial engineer, and I remember at the time, it was like your first year you would fail almost every class. That was, that was the norm, okay? Um, and so you have what it's called sep September exams. So the academic course doesn't start until the end of September, early October. So before that, mid-September, early mid-September, you have exams, each course has an exam for those students who fail the class throughout the academic year. And that exam is including your tuition, it's part of it, okay, you have to pay for that, it's included. Um, and then if you fail that too, then you have to retake the course whenever, right, and pay again. Okay. So in Spain, what do you need to pass? A five out of 10, a 50 out of 100, no? It seems such an easy task, but I tell you it's not, it's not easy, it's not that easy as it, as it might sound. Uh, this, this, I did uh, some research on it. Um, and Universidad de Granada, uh, University of Granada in the south, it's a pretty important university, um, states in their laws that only when 70% or more of the students fail a course, then a committee or commission will require a professor or the professors to provide academic reasons as to why such a high number. 70%. So you have 20 people in your class and only six pass, basically. Um, and I, I tell you, um, in my, when I was getting my undergrad in Spain, I remember there are a few courses, um, and I can think of one named uh, accounting, financial accounting, I think was the name of it. I'm not kidding, uh, the first time I, I took the, the final exam, I think 10% people passed, something like that. And I'm not making this up, okay? Um, of course, I have to retake it. <laughs> so it's very different, okay? Um, so where's the fun? <laughs> when you go to college, right? Where's the fun? Well, the fun is, and this applies to not just college people, but Spaniards overall. The fun is outdoors, okay? So you have the nightlife and the daylife. During the nightlife, okay, you have what it's called botellona, okay? And this is not for everyone, this is more for like younger people. Some high school kids already at the age of 15 or so, they start doing this. Um, Kisa Clark last week in her presentation mentioned the botellona, for those of you who were there. Um, so you're familiar with it. If not, I'll show you a, pic uh, I'll show you a video and, and I'll explain a little bit. But uh, basically, nightlife, botellona. You go out in the street um, with a group of friends, and botellona means big bottle in Spanish, more or less. And what it is, is uh, a packet. And the packet is a bottle of liquor, uh, a set of plastic cups, okay, uh, a bag of ice, and a mixer, and you put it all in two bags. And you, you see all these young people going to specific spots in the city. You know, you have one and another one, you know, just carrying the bags and walking. And then what you do, you get to the spot, throw in the ground, start serving uh, yourself a drink, and start talking with your friends. In the meantime, you have a bunch of people around doing the same thing. So you get all these interesting interactions, okay? Um, now, that's illegal in Spain now. Uh, <laughs> But, although it's illegal, a lot of things in Spain are, are illegal, but it doesn't really matter if it's illegal, people do it anyway. And there's no consequences, okay? <laughs> so, this is a video from Rota in the south of Spain this year, in about a month ago. And this gives you an idea of what a botellona is, okay? And 
and just keeps going and keeps going and just a bunch of people just walking. Some of them just try to find uh, the right spot. Uh, if you're a group of guys, well, you see some few girls, so just, hey, let's, let's just stay here. <laughs> All right. Um, so, what else? Island Botellona. If you're in college, well, you can go to bars, right? Some people go to bars, um, and you go straight to bars. Uh, when you go out, okay? Or some people um, go to clubs. Um, usually, and at least personally for me, when I was young, um, the schedule was basically about, about midnight or so, you meet up with your friends, and then you do botellona until about two, and then around two, you go to a club. <laughs> and then you, you stay there till whenever. Okay. There's no closing time. Okay. Um, if you if you're more of a bar person when you're in college, usually you go straight to the bar. You do the botellona. Okay. Um, reason is clubs have drinks are very expensive. It's really expensive to drink at a club. So what do you do? You do the botellona first. Cheap, right? Um, but if you go to a bar, bars are usually cheaper. So just go to bar. Um, the atmosphere obviously is very different, okay? Uh, and so, since there's no closing time, there's no rush to drink. So, really, the result is people just drink slowly, they enjoy the talk, they hang out. They're less, <laughs> they're less drunk people than you would think. It's just more like, you, you know, people get a little tipsy and have a good time. Um, and I will say that they do not play flamenco at a club, okay? Uh, if you want to watch uh, or listen to flamenco, you go to specific shows. Um, and those shows, a lot of times, they are filled by tourists. Uh, flamenco is something, it's a, it's a traditional dance and singing and Spanish guitar. It's, 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 it's a mix. There are varieties of flamenco. Um, and it's mostly performed by gypsies. Okay, they are, they're geniuses at this, okay, they're really good at it. But again, it's a very small niche, okay. Um, I don't recall m me or any of my friends or any of my acquaintances going to any type of flamenco um, <laughs> festival, dance, place, or anywhere like that at all growing up, okay. So, um, day life. So what do you do during the day? Um, you go to a park, for example, and just hang out, just go, get in the grass, and just talk, enjoy, relax. Um, So that's my baby, that's my wife. But this is the idea. You go to a park. By the way, this, <laughs> that was a woman photographing um, just a couple of people doing really interesting poses on. This guy was with a Speedo, and he was just doing like <laughs> incredibly good shape. He's just doing like yoga poses and all kinds of stuff. Um, but we're just there hanging out, no problem. That's not, that's fine. You know, that person is there doing that, you know, that's not weird. I mean, it's kind of like interesting. That's different. You don't see that, but it, but okay, fine. So what you do is just that. You go to the to the park and hang out. Okay. Okay. So uh, you might go to a coffee place. Okay, have some coffee, uh, especially in the afternoon. You might go to a bar. Okay, and the idea of bar in Spain, a bar can mean your typical bar where you go have a drink. It could be a place where you go to have some coffee, maybe a beer, maybe some tapas. Uh, bar, the concept of bar is very broad in Spain, okay? Um, so Spaniards overall lo uh, love being out in the street, okay, being outdoors. To do what? To walk around, okay, this is like walking around. 
they're up they're outside to see okay meaning to see to see people so sometimes you see Spaniards if you're in Spain if you ever visit you may see a Spaniard all of a sudden he's just standing and he's kind of staring at your eyes directly in your eyes and you might feel like a little hostility maybe like your intrusiveness right a little bit not really it, it's just curiosity or you know it's that's just so normal okay so you go to the street you just to walk around to see to be seen you like to be seen so Spaniards in general they like to dress nice or nicer than you would think even if they're gonna run an errand even if they're gonna go to the supermarket to grab some bread for example that's fine you still put on your jeans your sneakers your you know uh, a nice shirt a uh, nice t-shirt no uh, you don't go in pajamas okay <laughs> um, to sit and this goes with the ideal bar to sit in an outdoors patio of a bar for example no? um, a coffee place to drink to have some tapas all right so um, what's the bar the bar is what it's called the temple of social interaction in Spain okay you have tapas there you go there to chat with some friends if you're an old person you might go there and play some domino okay um, that's more probably a smaller small town type of place but also in the city depends on, on the bar to have a drink to watch soccer if there's a big game going on you go meet up with your friends go to a bar Kind of like the same thing here no you go to Buffalo Wild Wings to watch uh, I don't know some NFL game or whatever it is right um, so the bar is the epicenter of socialization okay it's really important um, and again all of this might be more southern Spain that's my experience okay um, so overall it's a very social and outdoorsy life okay which in my opinion it helps to create a more relaxed and uh, drama free lifestyle okay. so this socialization how is the socialization process of a Spaniard okay Spaniards overall have an opinion for everything okay so we are very straightforward we're not really afraid of putting our thoughts out there okay um, a lot of us is what we call or what like what you guys call no no filter basically okay. um, and I think this whole we have an opinion for everything idea is because we think we know it all okay um, we interrupt constantly so you I might making a statement about something whatever it is that we're discussing and you're not gonna let me finish you're gonna jump in it no but you know but this and you, you start getting all into it uh, in a good way we gesture a lot okay constant gestures um, noise we make a lot of noise meaning when we are socializing we're very loud people okay um, so sometimes if you're not familiar with this type of interaction you might think that some people might be angry at each other or upset not really it's just we're just being really really loud okay um, and depending where um, jokes a lot of jokes to the extreme sometimes okay so constant messing around with each other and all of that okay. so um, Spaniards like to socialize as well uh, even when they're in uh, when they're riding in public transportation for example and in company of a total stranger okay I'm gonna show you a because they're overall again they're friendly and outgoing and this is a video um, from last month we were riding the train from Madrid to Sevilla or Sevilla Madrid I remember and this uh, I was sitting with my wife and my my kid and this guy in front of us just decided to interact with with the kid all of a sudden okay and I got the camera of course and recorded it
it really entertained him a lot, so that was really helpful. <laughs> and he did it for a while, for a long time. <laughs> he just kept going back and forth. Eventually, he, he grabbed the, the kid and he was just playing with it. Okay. That was, gr that really made me miss even more Spain. Um, <laughs> that was not creepy, okay? Um, very few things in Spain are considered creepy, okay? <laughs> that was just funny, I thought, you know, friendly. Um, so, going back to the idea of public transportation, Spaniards rely a lot on public transportation. Um, we do have cars, obviously. Um, usually there's not a car per person in the household. It's more like one or two cars per household, that's it, okay? Um, it's really hard also to get your driver license. Um, a lot of people fail, uh, even the written portion of it. Um, I remember with the practicum, um, I had to take X amount of classes, were really expensive. Um, and then when I took it, I remember it was eight of us and only two passed. So the whole system, I call it a, a little mafia in there, but it, it's made up to, be, to make it really hard and make you spend a, ch a good chunk of money to get your driver's license. So I remember me not getting my driver's license until I was in the US. And I went back to teach abroad one semester and said, I'm just gonna go ahead and do it and get my driver's license. And I did it. But the car, it's, the thing is you have public tr transportation. It's a really good system. So you're not forced really to have a car. Plus, a family might not afford to get you a car when you're in, in school. Um, the driving age, also, it's 21. Okay, it's not 18. Um, or what is that here, 16? 16. Big difference, right? Uh, and then uh, another interesting thing about that is that you have to take the test with a standard car. You're not allowed to do it with automatic, okay? So, 90, I don't know, I'm gonna make up a number, but I'd say 98% of Spaniards have a manual car, automatic. I mean, a manual or standard thing. Um, that trend is changing a little bit. Now it's more people are starting to get automatics, but still. Uh, anyway, so public transportation, so we have the bus, okay? We have the train. We have the bikes, and uh, this is a, we have a, a lot of this in uh, my hometown, this is in Sevilla, and this is uh, set up by the city hall, and so you just apply for it, become a, you get a membership for the rental bikes, and you just, there are plenty of spots in the city where you, you have all these bikes, and so you can take the bike, Write it, whatever, and surely you'll have somewhere close to the, your final destination where you can drop the bike off. And that's it, you don't worry about it. So biking is, is getting really, really big in Spain. You see a lot of people now riding bikes everywhere. Okay. Subway, okay, uh, in major cities, okay. Subway in major cities. Um, and the subway just makes wonders. Uh, for example, there is Subway Madrid, so many lines so fast, it can take you from one point to another so much quicker than any, any other way. And of course, and this is not public transportation, but walking, okay? So Spaniards walk a lot. Um, big distances sometimes, okay? So going back to uh, the train part, uh, where we saw earlier our friend in the video, uh, we have the AVE, and AVE is the Spain's high-speed train. Um, this is great for public transportation. Uh, AVE will take you from, uh, from many points in Spain to other cities, right? Uh, the first line was from Sevilla to Madrid, and now it's expanded all over. Just to give you an idea, uh, to, to go from Sevilla to Madrid by car, it will take you about six hours. If you consider, you know, you stop at least once, right, and all that. So six hours or so, this train will take you in about two and a half. 
So it's, it's really fast. And what, what happens now is that uh, business people, they don't, a lot of them, they don't take the plane anymore to go from Sevilla to Madrid. They actually take the train instead. Because what you're doing is, you're going, instead of having to go all the way outside the city to an airport, deal with the security part of it. Wait there until, you know, you have to be there ahead of time, all of that, you know, the checking in the bags, not checking in the bags. You go to train station, downtown, most of the times, get in the train pretty quick, pretty fast, get there, get out, done. So really it's much more convenient, okay? Uh, and it's really, and it's really comfortable, okay? Uh, so uh, we have, actually let me show you, I have a video here. And this is uh, the Ave inside the train, okay? That's just the area where you can go have uh, some drinks or coffee or whatever. Um, it, it's a very nice train uh, inside. It's very, very comfy. Um, so we have public transportation. Let me just go back. Public transportation and our roads and highways are in really, really good shape. Um, it's just amazing the high quality of, uh, of roads and highways that we have. So overall, we have a really high quality infrastructure um, for transportation, uh, despite the economic crisis. Uh, I don't know if some of you are aware, but Spain is not doing very well these days. Um, last year, and these are rounding up numbers, okay, in Andalusia, which is my region in the south uh, of Spain, it's the biggest region in Spain, okay, um, the unemployment last year was somewhere around 25%. That's really, really high. That's over the top. Um, in fact, at some point this year, we reached a level of unemployment superior than the one that you guys had during the Great Depression. So you can only imagine. Um, and last year, the unemployment for young professionals, and young professionals meaning from 25 to 40 years old, was close to 50% in Andalusia. So <laughs> that's just not very good. So you might be a 35-year-old Spaniard living at your parents' house, okay? Um, simply because you cannot afford to move out. Um, which, by the way, is fine, okay? Um, why? Because Spaniards are very family-oriented family anyway, okay? So this is... Uh, some of my siblings and their kids, and these are them pe uh, picking me up at the airport. <laughs> and then they'll go away. That's, uh, that's good enough. All right. Uh, okay, we're just going to leave it there uh, for now. So, you know, going back to the economic crisis, why? Well, there's so many reasons. I'm not an economist. Um, my thoughts on it, um, from an ignorance uh, point of view, okay, uh, embezzlement, uh, explosion of the real estate bubble, which that's mentioned constantly. Um, I think there's also a lot of financial hurdles for small private sector to develop, okay? Um, and there's a huge, this, this is almost a fact, there's a huge lack of productivity when you're working, okay? Um, some studies, and I'm not gonna go much into it, but some studies show that 
one of the major reasons why there's a lack of productivity, why Spaniards don't work as hard, is because of their schedule. So your typical schedule here, uh, for a good chunk of business, right, would be from nine, I believe, right, from nine to five, no? In Spain, or eight to five, no? Uh, in Spain would be, it really depends, but overall would be from nine to two p.m., then you get a break, and then let's say five to eight, or 5.30 to 8.30, or somewhere around there, okay? Um, so between, let's say, that 2 p.m. that you get off work and that 5, 5.30 p.m. where you have to go back to work, what do you do? You, well, you sleep a two or three hour siesta. Not really, you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> no one does that really these days much. Um, if you are an older person, you might, especially small town. Uh, some people still do it, okay. Um, but people don't have even really much time for that. For that. You have to go home. You have lunch with your family, okay? If you have some coffee, you also have to take into account that you have to go back to work. Maybe work might take you 30 minutes to get there since the moment you leave the house, you take the bus, the subway, whatever it is. So there's, realistically, there's not even time for that long of a nap. Some people might take quick naps. Um, I, I don't recall any of my friends or family members taking any naps. Um, Maybe my dad when I was younger, I think, but, so the nap is not, it's a nap time that people don't use for nap, okay? But it's, but it's called nap time, okay? Lunch break, yeah? Um, so the lack of productivity with this schedule, basically, so let's say you get home from work at, so you leave work at 8, 8.30, you get home at 9, 9.30, somewhere, somewhere around there. By the time you have dinner, it's so late, but you have to wake up still kind of early. Right? So, a lot of Spaniards are sleep deprived a little bit, okay? That's a new idea that is coming out. I think there's some, they're trying little by little to see if the, they can change the schedule in Spain more to the schedule like it is here. Um, I don't think that's gonna happen anytime soon. Um, but, I think now they're starting to realize that maybe the schedule is not very helpful, okay? Um, so, uh, regardless of all of this, uh, Spain, and just to wrap it up, uh, Spain can be a country of laid-back mentality and lifestyle and goofball characters, as you can see, um, and a, just a very enjoyable place to live if you have a job. All right, so thank you very much for attending. And um, any questions, welcome. <laughs>